My name is Yara. I work at Agritecture. We share the office here alongside AgTech X. Um, and to kind of, I wanted to start by telling you a little bit about what we do and our role in this whole space. So we actually started out as a blog about eight years ago. And it was really just kind of a platform to provide accessible knowledge around forms of controlled environment agriculture, whether that was new developing technologies or different ways of growing. And we did that for a few years, and from there we started getting a lot of demand um, from people who wanted to start their own farms. So they would reach out to us and be like, this is really great, do you think you can help me with my own idea? And so kind of the consulting arm of Agritecture was born. So currently what we do um, is quite a few things. We do hold specialized courses on CEA, we also hold workshops internationally, but our main business is the consulting side. So we have people who come up to us with some sort of idea around urban farming, and then we'll help them kind of get to their goal. A lot of times we do that through feasibility studies. So someone might come up to us with an idea around an entrepreneurship program like Square Roots, or we have some people who want to start up their own farms. And so we'll typically help them with the market research, figuring out the kind of crops they want to grow. We move that into design of the farm, and we take all that data and we move it to the economic analysis. And from there, we kind of see if this model works. If it doesn't, we'll go back and do the whole process again. And so um, an example of a farm here in New York City uh, that went through that process is Farm One, who some of you might be familiar with. And my role in specific in this whole process is the economic side. So this kind of event is actually really, really interesting to me um, because I think a lot of people come up to us um, and they kind of read the articles that Ricky was talking about. So they'll be like, oh, I can produce so much in a shorter amount of time and I can price it at a premium and then I'll make like a million dollars and I'll be good. Um, and so that's kind of like a really big, uh, that's the thing we hear, I guess, a lot. And I think the number one thing I say to people is that, yeah, okay, well, food, you, you might have like a really cool technology and this is great and this can be super efficient, but in the end of the day, you're not dealing with a gadget, you're dealing with a perishable good. And as simple as that may sound, it just completely changes up the business model. So sometimes we find that we're grouped with the tech industry, but in reality, you're looking at completely different payback periods, completely different business models around that. You know, you're not necessarily looking at like a one, two year payback, it's more like seven years. But I think what's important for people to understand is that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Your business model is gonna be dependent on everything from the type of market that you're gonna be in to the objective of your project. So for example, um, we have a lot of people that come up to us who say, well, my number one objective is to hire a lot of people. And that's a pretty big cost for a farm, but it doesn't mean that there isn't some kind of value behind that. You might not get your payback right now, but what this whole conversation is about is how do you add a dollar value to that? And how do you find people or alternative forms of funding that can understand those business models and that can understand the value behind certain objectives such as like hiring more labor? And more importantly, I guess, how do you find investors or forms of funding that understand that doing a pilot is the number one thing that a lot of these businesses need to do first. They need to test out their ideas.